Let's go into our next question sent in by Enrique. Hey, Brother D, Sister K. I hope you are both doing well. My question for this week's episode of Bulletproof Faith is regarding the concept of slavery in the Bible. Now, there are references in the Bible, whether in the Old or New Testament, uh, where authors such as Moses or in the Old and Paul in the New talk about the issues around slavery. Um, and many people who do not believe in the Bible, obviously, use those references to argue about the fact that the Bible is a book that encourages the concept of slavery, which is why Christians in the Middle Ages and in a colonial era were more than eager to participate in colonialism and the transatlantic slave trade. How would you answer such bold claims um, using references from both the Old and New Testament? Thank you. Enrique, thanks so much for sending that in. Always a joy to see your face here on Bulletproof. And Dimitri, a really, wow, a, a good question and a very pertinent question to answer um, in the day and age we're living in. How, what does the Bible mm. say? Well, what do you say? <laughs> uh -uh. This is Bible answers, not my opinion. Okay. Well, in Enrique, um, you know, one of the, the great and I think the great strides that we've seen in the last few hundred years have been the, the emancipation of slavery and abolishment of slavery. And, mm. and um, I, I just think back of the years, William Wilberforce, a strong Christian yeah. who, um, you know, just by um, continually bringing the word of God to the British Parliament mm -hmm. really was able not only for Britain itself, but for all the territories yeah. occupied for the entire British Empire really was able to bring about and into slavery. So that really gives you an idea of the spirit of Christianity mm -hmm. to um, be able to see people being set free. At the same time, I think we need to realize a couple of factors here. One, we're living in a world that is very humanistic in philosophy. We don't have time too much to talk about that, but a, a world that can quickly look at the Bible and see the Bible speaking of slavery and say, well, the Bible's outdated and, and antiquated and doesn't apply to our world today mm -hmm. because it speaks of slavery. And um, we have to be absolutely sure what we believe, what we don't believe as Christians. So um, I think we need to define what's mm -hmm. important is to define and understand when you think of slavery, we see it in the form of, uh, you know, think back in the previous centuries, Muslim slave traders coming in, um, European slave traders coming to Africa, taking people, chaining them by the necks, dragging them off. Mm. The Bible never condones that. However, the Bible does speak about slavery and servanthood. And we need to understand that it doesn't condemn it because um, we, we come to understand that slavery, well, it was just like almost in a sense, like employment, being employed, working for a boss, having a master, and uh, you had a particular skill. You could go offer yourself to someone. And there were different reasons we see in the scripture why people would become slaves. Mm -hmm. Maybe a guy's got a big debt or maybe he wants to buy some property for himself. He will go and he'll say, okay, well, I need a million to be able to um, buy that property so I'll go I'll become a slave to that man he'll give me the money I'll buy the property mm. and I'll serve him for X amount of years yeah. um, and so that's very legitimate so um, we've got a, a, a couple of things and and uh, what's um, if, if you look to Old Testament passages Exodus 21 yeah. um, where it speaks of slaves and, and notice when God did give laws for slaves it was there for the protection mm. and for the provision. In other words, God allowed slavery to exist because people need money. Yeah. And so um, this was one way it was showing. But at the same time, um, Corin, what does the, the Lord say there? Mm. So at the same time, he Exodus put very um, strict guidelines in place of how the master were to treat the slave and obviously also how the slave were to respond to the master. And so yeah, in Exodus 21, um, it's speaking to that. And so he says, if you're buying a servant, he will serve six years. And in the seventh, he shall go out free and pay nothing. 
Um, yeah. And then a couple of verses it goes on explaining if yeah. he gets a wife, um, you know, what, what's to happen when he wants to. Yes. Leave. So a promise of freedom okay. can work and six years. And there's a hope for freedom as well. Yeah. Right? And of course, there was that jubilee year as well. Yeah, the Bible 50th year where it says all the slaves yeah. go free. Yes. But then, so in that year, if he wants to go out, and it says, if the servant says plainly, I love my master, my wife and my children, I'm not going to go out free, then his master shall bring him to the judges. Um, and he'll bring him to the door, the doorpost, and his master will pierce his ear, and he shall serve him forever. Mm. Yeah. So, um, a, like a little tradition there, mm. a practice that, and and this just shows us, really gives us insight that some people really like slavery was not a bad thing for no, them. Because yeah, when it says, he, "I love my master," I love so my obviously master. Obviously, his master yeah. must have treated him so well, yes. kindly. He's got a wife, children. I mean. Looks like he's got a good setup there. Yeah, Abram had a lot of servants. Yeah. And I can think that they must have loved him so much. Yeah. I mean, even that relationship with his servant where he, he trusted him so much and his own son. with his own son to mm. get him a wife. So there's a real sense of relationship there yes. as well. Okay. So a lot and a godly master would treat his slaves and his servants like his own children. And mm. so they would become part of his household. Yeah. Um, and in, in times we know that that um, slaves they could they could um, be teachers training children, mm. uh, they could be doing handiwork crafts all that kind of thing, and um, so we understand we we realize that this was not people just being <coughs> taken against their own will, but mm. they were saying I want to become a servant, and others were saying I want to stay a servant, mm. and um, we realize that the the whole um, teaching of servanthood is something that carries into the New Testament. Yeah. Um, we've got the example of Jesus, the servant. He came as the, he's called God's servant, but he also came to serve man. He said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. Mm. And ultimately to give his life as a ransom. Jesus was willing to lay down his life to serve. And from morning to night, when Jesus was ministering on earth, he was, what was he doing? Serving. Healing yeah. people. Uh, serving serving people, people, ministering. He wasn't asking for money. He was doing it out of his heart. Um, and Galatians mm. tells us that we have the same attitude. In love, serve one another. Yeah. Paul referred to himself as the bond servant or bond slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so um, we understand that there is a Christian form of slavery, mm. which is really us serving each other in the church. And so we look at each other as brothers and sisters, but in love we serve each other. Yeah. yeah. Uh, very, very nice thought over there. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, that term that you use, bond servant, that's reminding us that that passage we just read in Exodus, a bond servant being that person who says, I love my master, I want to stay with him. Mm -hmm. And so Paul, when he calls himself a bond servant of Christ, he's saying, I love my master. Um, I don't want to go free. Yes. Um, and yeah, I mean, he writes there as well in, in to the church in Ephesus. He gets some really great instructions um, in Ephesians chapter 6, um, verse 5, to, to bond servants. Mm. So obviously servants who stayed with their masters and then also to masters. And, and he says here um, in Ephesians 6, reading to the New Living Translation, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely as you would serve Christ. Try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you. As slaves of Christ, do the will of God with all your heart. Work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will reward each one of us for the good we do, whether we are slaves or free. Masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Don't threaten them. Remember, you both have the same master in heaven and he has no favorites. Yes. So, Enrique, God didn't invent slavery. I think God just brought out something which, um, you know, if you think even in, in a family where children are under their parents, mm -hmm. um, s slaves are under their masters, but the Lord, Jesus, elevates it mm -hmm. to where it becomes something that is not bad. We you are serving with all your heart and you're serving as to the Lord, where your master is caring for you and looking out for you. Mm. And that can become a real beautiful relationship. As um, we have that letter of, of uh, Paul writing to Philemon regarding his slave Onesimus. Mm. 
And Paul says, receive him like a brother. Yeah. Um, and, and so there's, there's a real, I think the Lord can take real, you know, things that we can look and go, ah, oh, that's awful, that's horrible. But God can bring out the beauty in it mm. and the fullness in relationship. And of course, all in Christ, yeah. in the Lord Jesus. Absolutely. Um, and if, if I can really just challenge you all, like just watching this and, you know, and we think of, of um, you know, again, the, that humanistic kind of philosophy that says, I refuse to serve anyone. I'm here, but, you know, serve me. I got my rights. I can do, you know, when you take that attitude into the workplace, you make it stink. And, you know, taking that kind of, you know, I'm here to be served. And, you know, I think it's important that we take that passage here yeah, that we see in Ephesians 6 and we apply it in our work situations. Mm. That you realize your boss is my master. I'm here to serve him. He pays me a wage, a salary. I'm here to do his well. Not here just to sit, chat on my phone, send text messages, whatever. You know, I'm here to serve him. And it says, like, you know, not just with eye service, not just because they're watching you, but do it out of the heart. And, and I think that all of us, if we carry the servanthood attitude, wherever we go, our workplace would become so much better. We'd become so much more productive. Mm. And we're not just looking at the job and saying, well, how can I climb the corporate ladder? What's in this for me? What can I get out of this? But I'm here to serve and I'm here to serve because Jesus is the ultimate servant and I'm going to be there too. Mm, awesome. So. Great.